So I've been hearing about this one class notebook um, thing for a while. Uh, Microsoft Education um, is has been really uh, working to support teachers. Um, and so they were taking their OneNote notebooks um, and expanding them to these class notebooks. Um, and so I've been waiting um, for the opportunity to implement this. I've heard a lot about it and was really excited about it. Um, but and what I kept saying to our technology um, director was that un until I, as a math teacher, until I, my students have a device that they can write on, OneNote class notebooks is not was not necessarily um, helpful for me. Because um, here's the idea. The idea is that um, class notebooks are have aspects of the notebook that are shared and collaborative, but then each individual student in your class has a notebook for themselves where they can take notes, um, submit assignments, um, and it would really be a notebook just for them. Um, where, and again, so I said, until my students have a device um, where they can write um, on the device, that's not really helpful for me um, in geometry. They have to draw pictures and solve equations and, um, and things like that. So um, when our school was going one-to-one -one this year, um, I was super excited to be able to test out this OneNote class notebook where my students um, could take notes um, and I could access them whenever I need to. So every class notebook, um, and here's one of my class notebooks for one of my classes, um, has a couple sections, um, a collaboration space, which is a space um, where all students have access to. Um, so what we did um, was we mainly used it for students to post um, review materials um, and, and ideas. Uh, we did an activity where we saw we went to find um, polygons around the building, um, a couple students put their exam study guides um, on this, um, which was really helpful. I think a lot of the students really appreciated um, the work that they did um, to share that with the class. Um, and so that is the collaboration space. Um, there's a content library, which I, only I have access to. Um, and so this was the transition. This is where I put some of our guided notes that we took in class. And this is where um, I uploaded our homework solutions um, by chapter. So then students could go in and access um, the homework solutions for a particular chapter, um, which was nice. You can see there's, it's nice to organize. There's these drop down menus um, for different pages. <coughs> um, and then there's some there's some folders that all students have access to. But then what you'll see here is then I have a notebook for each one of my students. I'm going to go into Bridget. Um, and some of these sections were sections that I created for her. Um, I created the handouts, a class notes, a notebook, and a quizzes section. Um, she created this other section for herself. So to some extent, um, I can organize, um, and then other uh, other ideas. Um, the students can organize themselves. And I'm choosing Bridget's because she did a pretty good job of keeping her um, her stuff organized. Um, so let's go to class notes, for example. So uh, Bridget was taking notes. Um, and let's go to chapter seven, for example. So you can see that these were the notes that Bridget took. She either took them from a flip lesson or lessons in class. Um, and you can see they use different colors and highlighters um, to access um, and to do different examples um, together. Uh, and then she also has a homework section. Um, and this is where she did all her homeworks. And as you can see, she was very organized. Um, some students were not as organized, and that's actually a change I'm going to make for next year. Um, but these were um, worksheets that I distributed to their notebooks, and I can talk about how to do that um, a little bit later. But then she can just do her work right on these worksheets. Um, it saved me a lot of class time, um, honestly, for a math teacher going around and checking homework for completion um, or collecting things and checking them later. Um, could be pretty time consuming. Um, so having access to their notebook um, whenever was really helpful um, to be able to access uh, all of 
all of the work that they're doing um, to be able to check for understanding um, for different ideas. Um, and it's kind of nice, you'll see here it's, it's highlighted if it's something I hadn't looked at yet. Um, so students were able to, to go through um, and do their work here. Um, handouts, I think this is where I just put their syllabus. But I can access every student's notebook for that. And so you'll see all of the different students um, in a particular class has those notebooks. How I organized it was I organized each um, block or each section um, with a different notebook. Um, but it, it's I was really impressed by some of the students, um, how they utilized um, some of the drawing features um, and some of the uh, line features, especially in geometry. Um, I was really impressed by the things that they learned that I didn't even, um, I, weren't, I wasn't even aware of. Um, so you'll see most of mine um, was worksheets and notes, um, and uh, they were able to put some screenshots in here, um, which, was, which was kind of neat. Um, but we, some of the other teachers had PowerPoints, um, and, and we'll walk through what that looks like um, and what PowerPoint notes look like for them. Um, but that was also probably something that was kind of um, surprising for me. So in geometry, a lot of times either a picture from a book or a picture from a website, it's really helpful to draw on it. Um, and that was something that I did not expect um, students to, to hop right into, um, but they did. So they would, um, they would cut and paste um, an image from a, uh, from a book work. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find one at the moment um, and work in. Um, actually, here's an example of um, the different backgrounds. So some of the students did a grid background when they were trying to do graphing. Um, I'm not sure if Kayla did um, any of that, but again, hers is organized pretty nicely as well towards the end. Um, I'll have to find another, another notebook um, where a student did some screenshots. Um, of that, but here they she did some of the book work, which was which was great as well. Um, actually, let me I think Addie did so. Let's look at Addie um, Addie Robinson. Um, so if it's a worksheet, it's nice, um, but when it was book work or things from a website, um, that was a little bit more challenging. Um, so that was, yeah, so here's an example. Um, so this was a, a, a picture um, from the screenshot of a book. Um, and again, we're just talking about angle measures, um, but sometimes that can be difficult to identify um, in a book or on a screen. Um, so she took a, a snapshot of it and put it in her OneNote notebook, um, which was really beneficial for her as she was solving um, different, different problems. Um, and chapter seven, I think was just, yep, this is another perfect example. Um, so here she took snapshots from the book um, to put them in so she can write right on the picture um, to identify, identify different things um, for this particular section, um, which, was, which was really ideal. Again, I'm doing it right here. Uh, sometimes it's challenging in a math class to be able to, to take a picture and, and visualize it and either copy it onto the page um, or, or think about it without drawing on the picture. Um, and some of the students really worked, worked well uh, to do that. Um, some of them, some of the students, when we got into circles, um, really utilized the, uh, the circle features. Let me see if I can find um, one of those. Actually, some of them didn't like uh, didn't like uh, to take notes without the circle feature, um, and I got them to to think through that. Um, so again, she was using using the circle feature because she wanted her circles to be perfect, um, and uh, some of the lines and features that they used um, were that way as well. The students really liked the colors. Um, and being able to um, highlight and, and draw different lines on um, was really ideal for some of the work that we were doing in geometry to try and visualize some of the different shapes and ideas. Um, so overall, I was really impressed by how the students navigated OneNote. Um, it saved me a lot of time when checking homework. 
um, and worksheets to be able to go into each notebook. Um, one thing I'm going to change for next year um, is doing a little bit more um, talk about uh, organization, um, just like we would have students organize their three reminder um, and maybe do notebook checks. I'm probably going to do that a little bit more um, in the coming in the coming years, um, just things that I learned um, from this year's experience. Um, but overall, I was very pleased um, with OneNote Classroom um, and was really excited about the ways that that could be used. Um, and I was actually really impressed by my colleagues who hadn't really used OneNote at all, who kind of jumped right in. Um, and we're going to hear from one of those uh, later on in, in the video. Um, we'll also talk about how to create a OneNote uh, class notebook for your own classes. Um, so it, overall, it was really great, and I'm excited to see what my students um, do and what the possibilities that, that, that OneNote Classroom has for my classroom in future years. You're about to hear from Katie Mashenko, one of our science teachers here in the upper school. She taught uh, biology this year. Um, she is actually new to Holy Child and new to the Microsoft Surface and OneNote, and I was just so impressed by her willingness to um, step out and try something and dive right in. Um, and we were actually really um, great colleagues and collaborators this year as we were both tackling OneNote Classroom with our classes. So she is going to explain a little bit about um, how she utilized it in her own classroom. Um, she organized things slightly different than me, um, and I'm excited for you to hear from her um, and one from what she learned this year. Hello, fellow educators. In this short screencast, I want to show you a little bit about how I used OneNote Classroom with my freshman classes this year. For those of you unfamiliar with this application, OneNote Classroom is a tool that can be used to replace the traditional paper-based classroom. This is my first year utilizing OneNote Classroom, but I've become quite a supporter of this tool in a short amount of time because it has yielded so many benefits to my students and to me as a teacher. So let me give you a very quick tour. I've opened up the OneNote application. If you look over here to your left, you can see all of my notebooks um, that I currently have open. These first two that are designated with a purple notebook are my own personal notebooks. However, these three down here, um, designated by a blue notebook, are, um, are my class notebooks. And so what I did this year um, for my freshman biology classes is I set up um, a class notebook for each class. I'm gonna go ahead and open the notebook for my honors biology block B so that you can see inside this notebook, um, I actually have individual notebooks for all of my students. So here's Anne's and Ashley's and Bridget's. And what is nice about this, I'll click on Bridget so you can see that what's inside of her notebook. Um, in her notebook, let's see, here we go. So this is Bridget's notebook. Um, but I, I set it up this way to include specific sections. So I, I um, thought that it would be important to have graphic organizers, PowerPoints, homeworks, labs, and so on. And the way that I use this is that I can actually, um, anything that you would typically do in a traditional classroom on paper. So things like um, printing, photocopying, and distributing PowerPoints for students to write on. So I'm doing that now on paper. Um, I can do that electronically using these class notebooks. Um, other things like students would typically write out homework problems on paper, which then I would have to collect and um, correct and then pass back to them. Again, that's something that I can do here electronically without the use of paper. So let me show you an example. Let's say I'm gonna go to my own personal biology notebook. This is kind of like a master copy notebook. It's not shared with the students, but it has all of my, um, all the sections that I've created to keep myself organized. Um, let's say I want to distribute this PowerPoint on fungi to my students. You can, as I scroll through here, you can see that um, I've left some blanks in the PowerPoints that the students can use to, um, to take their own notes. And so instead of 
printing this out and photocopying it and giving it to each student, what I can do is from my personal notebook, I can go up to the top here. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure you're, um, that you select class notebook. And then as long as I'm highlighted here, I can go over to distribute page and click on cross notebook distribution. What that will do is it will bring up all of my class notebooks so that I can actually distribute this document to more than one class at once. So let's say I want this to go to only my honors B and C blocks. From there, all I have to do then is select which section in my student notebooks I want this document to appear. So since these are PowerPoint notes, I'm gonna select PowerPoint notes. And then it's gonna take a few seconds to distribute these pages to all of my um, student notebooks in honors B and C. But once it is done distributing, it will appear in each student's notebook. And then during class, these students can um, open their notebooks and they'll, they'll find it right there and they can start taking notes on um, directly on the um, document on their surfaces. Usually it doesn't take this long. I haven't opened this for a while. Okay, so I'm gonna just um, All right, so now we can go ahead and now that it's distributed, we can go ahead and check. Um, and we can see that, like if I check Kiki's notebook, we go to her PowerPoint section, scroll down to the most recent one, and there it is. There's um, the fungi PowerPoint ready for her to take notes on. Um, and this would be true in any student in biology block B. I could also go to block C and find the same thing. Um, I've distributed it to Jada's notebook. There it is at the bottom. Now um, it's there, she can write on it. Um, let me go ahead and show you how this has worked throughout the year. My students have produced some really beautiful work um, so here's Bridget's notebook. Bridget has done a really great job organizing her PowerPoints by unit. Um, so while I do the initial organization, um, the tabs that you see up at the top labeled graphic organizers and PowerPoints, the student does still have some responsibility to organize work that has been distributed to each section in their notebook. So Bridget over here has done a great job. You can see that she um, organized her PowerPoints into units. So here on this one, you can see, actually she wrote in the light colors, but um, you can see all the notes she took while we were in class. A um, little bit of doodling there. Um, we can see, let's see, let me pull up. This was a pedigree analysis. Mm, she might not have been there for that night. Oh, she did all of her stuff in light colors. This is probably not a good example to show you. Um, other things that students can do with this um, is that they can also add their own work. So for example, um, here under homework, if a student, um, if I've assigned reading and questions and the student wants to turn it in electronically, she can actually go ahead and add a page and type in her answers. Um, as soon as she types in her answers, I can actually see it live and correct it. So you can see my corrections here. Um, and then she can immediately get that feedback. I've done this here as well. If we look under labs, um, here was a lab she did that I, I uploaded this lab. Um, and then she answered the questions and you can see down here, I wrote this feedback in, she can see it. Nobody else can see this, um, but I can write feedback in each individual student's notebook. And actually she corrected her work based on what I said here. So um, this was a, a good use of being able to communicate with the student um, in real time and um, getting that feedback to her as soon as possible. Um, 
but I'll still want to tell you. Another nice benefit of this is that, um, like I was saying, they can't see each other's work, but I can see all the work that they do in their bio notebook. Um, and for students that are absent, I can actually copy work from one student notebook to another. So if, you know, one day a student was absent and missed the PowerPoint notes on cells, I can actually copy this page and insert it into another student's notebook. So that has helped a lot um, with keeping students all on the same page, whether or not they've been in school that day. Okay, so that's just a little intro to some of the ways that I've used OneNote class notebooks this year. Please let me know if you have questions or want me to help you set up class notebooks for your students next year. This is another example of one of our fabulous middle school teachers um, who utilized OneNote class notebook um, in her language arts and social studies class. And we're gonna highlight here just the language arts um, notebook and then we might look at the social studies one online. So what you'll see here um, is that this teacher put a lot more of her own um, folders up here at the top. So these are all hers. Um, and she organized them um, by grammar, poems, and short stories, um, the different books that they read, um, a whole unit on short stories, To Kill a Mockingbird, um, and Wernley Wise. Um, so what you'll see here is these are the notes she took in class. Um, and these were PowerPoints that she had created um, about different grammar um, ideas, um, notes on verbs. So you'll see as she went through these PowerPoints, um, she um, put in the notes um, for each of these. And um, they did some wordly wise activities. Um, you'll see for the different books um, that they created, um, she went through um, and have, has her solutions for these. So let's take a look at one of the students' notebooks. You can see what it looks like um, in, in the middle school realm of things. Um, so these were the notes that um, Grace took on these uh, questions, these reading questions for, for particular chapters. Um, and these seventh graders, they are also in the one-to-one -one program with um, devices, and they um, they have to earn earn um, the the privilege of taking them home. Um, so I'm not sure if some of these activities were done at home or um, or in class, um, but you'll see this is looks like a PDF um, version that was brought in as well. Um, it looks like they start to talk about diagramming rules. Um, so um, this is another helpful tool. So they uh, in, inputted the line um, the line feature. Um, particularly, and I even noticed this with my high school students, um, without lines on the paper, um, the organization of the notes, um, if there's no background um, worksheet or PowerPoint to write on, can be particularly challenging. So adding in like the grid feature for um, my, uh, my students or the line feature um, is really helpful. And that is over here on the view. So line line rule, um, this is wide rule, more of a college rule, and then the different grid um, lines are really helpful as well. So you can see that really helped this middle school student um, to organize some of her ideas. Um, so let's go into one of the books. So this is an introductory PowerPoint that the teacher um, implemented. Um, and then these are some of the, the reading notes um, that the students took. Um, let's see, it looks like those. And then we have some short stories. Um, PowerPoints, you can see that either the PowerPoints um, are uploaded like this, all in one, um, one page, for example, or um, like this where there's different pages and this looked like it happened to be a, a PDF that the teacher put in. Um, so again, this is kind of what it looks like on the on the student side. Um, we can look um, at the social studies notebook. Um, this is the online version of the social studies notebook. So you can see this teacher organized by chapter um, with some, uh, you know, the constitution stuck in there. Um, and then this is the same student 
um, her social studies notebook, we can look in um, and see see what this is like. So this is actually really helpful to know as well because um, if a student, let's say, didn't, doesn't bring the device home um, or for some reason the device isn't working, um, all of their notebooks are available online um, for at all at all times. So if they if there's something wrong with the device and they have to get a new one or the student forgets it or forgets the charger and it's dead, um, they can still access their notes um, from any device, either a phone or a parent's um, desktop computer. Um, and so they can still have access if they need to study um, or do anything like that. Um, that's actually been really helpful. We've had students who um, have a damaged device um, and then they don't have to recreate their whole notebook. Um, they just go online um, and then download it again. And I'm not going to get too much into the nitty gritty um, of some of the details of using one class notebook, but I do want to talk about where you manage your class notebooks um, and some of the tools and features that are helpful there. So if you're on the class notebook add-in, um, which you'll, you'd have to add into your desktop version of OneNote, um, there's lots of different things here um, to be able to review. Um, but if you, this is where you could create a new class notebook, although I would suggest creating it online. Um, adding and removing students and adding and removing teachers. But if you go here to manage notebooks, um, this is where I have found um, is, is the best option for this. And what you'll see here um, is that you will then see all of your class notebooks that you have. Um, and you can see that I, uh, somebody shared um, hers with me. Um, so that's why I'm having these co-owned notebooks here as well. Um, but let's go back up to the top with mine. So you'll see here, these are the student sections. So these are the sections that I created when I established this, um, this notebook. So that these are the sections that my students start with. Again, they can add or, or edit those when needed. Um, there is an option to have teacher only sections, um, which I only have access to. Um, and that would be uh, use if, if you wanted to put notebooks um, or keys or things in your teacher only section, that would be helpful. Currently, I have my collaboration spaces unlocked, um, but you could lock them. Um, so if there's, if you want students to collaborate until a certain point, you could then lock the collaboration space and they would still have access to see it, but not be able to edit it. Um, you could give specific students permission to view specific sections in the collaboration space. Um, so this would be really helpful if you had um, groups. So let's say group A needed to work on their project in the collaboration space for their folder, but not see other groups. Then you could set up specific sections for that. Um, and the other new thing with OneNote Classroom, which I thought was really helpful, is these parent and guardian links. Um, so if you needed to get a link so that a parent could see um, just their student's um, folder um, and notebook. If you wanted to share it with them, you could do that. Um, and they're read only, so there would be no access. And they don't have to have an Office 365 or Microsoft account to view, which is really helpful. Um, and so that you could copy this link and send it to a parent if there's some reason that you would need to give them access to that. Um, so that's really helpful. Um, you can set up um, additional teachers. Now that we are in the middle of our one-to-one -one rollout, um, and most of my students have Surface devices that they can write on, um, I was really excited about OneNote <clears throat> classroom possibilities for assessment. Um, and I haven't gotten to the point where I they're actually like taking quizzes or tests with their Surface. Um, we're still using paper for that. Um, but as a math teacher, I'm always looking for other ways to assess um, and give variety in assessment other than tests and quizzes. So for the last quarter, um, we did a self-paced unit and students were asked um, to replace any quiz or test um, with a video lesson that they have created on their own. So what you're about to see is one of my ninth grade students in honors geometry. Um, she was doing her lesson on uh, surface area and volume of pyramids and cones. Um, and you'll hear, see and hear her explanation um, and her demonstration of mastery of the content. On to pyramids. And so a pyramid is a solid with a polygon base. And so 
for a regular pyramid, the base is a regular polygon. And so the altitude has a, an endpoint at the center of the base. Do we see that right here? And so then we are finding the surface area. And so our formula is right here. S equals one half of PL plus B. And so we have that, but what does that mean? So P is the perimeter of the base. L is the slant height, once again, and B is the area of the base. So let's work on number one, and let's write our formula out right here. And let's see what we can try and plug in here. So first we need to find the perimeter, and so this is a regular polygon, uh, or a regular pyramid, and so the base is a regular um, triangle and so all the sides are congruent so 15 plus 15 plus 15 or 15 times 3 equals 45 and so we know that our perimeter is 45 and then our um, slant height is we have that right here that's 20 and then plus B. Oh, sorry, we don't have that yet. And so, to figure that out, we um, need to use the Pythagorean theorem. So, or let's draw out our triangle right here. And so, this is 15, the hypotenuse. And so, what we need to find is this, and we know what this is because this is half of, it's divided into half, and so, that 15 divided by 2. I am so excited about our continued use here at Holy Child of One Note Class Notebook. Um, we already have a handful of other faculty who are considering using it in the upcoming year. Um, I'm even more excited um, this year because only our ninth graders had Microsoft Surfaces. Um, it made, and I had mixed classes of freshmen and sophomores, it made some of the um, challenging. I couldn't hop all in. So I'm really excited this year. I will have m all of my students um, will have the capability of using OneNote Class Notebook to take notes and collaborate. Um, and I'm excited about what uh, is in store for how it's going to transform my classroom um, and excited for my colleagues to explore and try out how this might be a useful tool um, to further the teaching practices and learning in their own classroom.